This is Daniela White with Urban Christian News Network. Thank you for joining us on this Saturday, September 21, 2013. Here are the top 10 news stories that you need to know about right now. First today, according to USA Today News, at least 39 people were killed during a Saturday afternoon shooting rampage at a shopping mall in an upscale district of Nairobi. The attack is believed to be orchestrated by extremists against non-Muslim Kenyans and Westerners in the area. At least 150 people were also injured. Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta also reported the current death toll and said he had lost some family members in the attack. Somali militant group Al-Shabaab claimed responsibility on Twitter for the deadly shooting, which was allegedly carried out by five to ten gunmen with AK-47s and other sophisticated weapons. Al-Shabaab said the attack was retribution for Kenyan forces' 2011 push into Somalia and threatened more violence. Marie Harf, deputy spokesman for the U.S. State Department, said we have reports of American citizens injured in the attack and the U.S. Embassy is actively reaching out to provide assistance. Due to privacy considerations, we have no further comment on American citizens at this time. The attack began on Saturday afternoon, according to Kenya's Daily Nation newspaper. Gunmen tossed grenades and opened fire as panicking shoppers fled the building, some jumping down one story from the second floor of the mall to escape. Nairobi Police Chief Benson Kibu deemed the shooting a terrorist attack. Second today, according to the Baptist Press, the North American Mission Board is convening a National Pastors Task Force on Evangelistic Impact and Declining Baptisms to address the continued decrease in baptisms among Southern Baptist churches. The group's first meeting was September 18th in Nashville. The 2012 annual church profile reported a drop of 5.52% in the number of baptisms in Southern Baptist churches, confirming a two-decade downward trend. The most recent accounting marked the first time since 1948 that baptisms, that baptisms dropped below 315,000. Al Gilbert, an AMB's vice president of evangelism, said that Southern Baptist leaders are concerned. Our baptismal trends are all headed in the wrong direction. He went on to say that with a burden to penetrate lostness in North America, we must pray and think through what we can and should do to turn around this decline. Gilbert is facilitating the group's sessions along with LifeWay Research President Ed Stetzer. In addition to the first meeting with Nashville, the task force will meet multiple times via conference calls and face-to-face -face meetings with the goal of completing its work by May 2014. According to Florida Baptist Witness, Henry Blackaby, one of the Southern Baptist's most beloved Bible teachers, went missing on Thursday, September 19th, around 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Blackaby, age 78, lives in the Atlanta, Georgia area. His son, Richard, in a notice posted on September 20th on Twitter around 8 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time, stated, Please pray. Henry Blackaby has been missing since 4 p.m. Thursday. He is in a black Lincoln without his diabetic medicine in the Atlanta area. Southern Baptists began using social media and other means to share the news, and at the Florida Baptist State Convention State po State Board of Missions meeting in Leesburg, Tim Maynard, president of the FBSC, led in prayer. NBC Channel 11 said Blackaby was wearing a blue shirt, blue or dark dress pants, and brown sandals when last seen at his home in Rex, Georgia. The station reported that Blackaby had not taken his insulin since 7 a.m. on Thursday. Richard Blackaby, however, in a comment on Twitter about 8.30 p.m. on Friday, September 20th, said that ha said that Henry Blackaby has been found. Doctors are checking him to see if he is okay, but he is safe. Thank you for your prayers. Blackaby Ministries International posted an update on its website. The update said the Blackaby family would like everyone to know that Henry has been found and is safe. His health concerns are being addressed, and we will keep everyone posted with the news. We wish to express to everyone our appreciation 
and gratitude for the prayers and concern over the last 29 hours. Henry has taught us that we can experience God in the good and the bad times. We thank God that we have experienced His grace, peace, and faithfulness in these times. Henry Blackaby is best known for the Experiencing God Bible study he co-authored with Claude King. The, description, the Discipleship Resource, first published in 1990, has sold more than 7 million copies in 45 languages. Blackaby is retired from the Southern Baptist North American Mission Board, but has continued to lead prayer and spiritual awakening conferences internationally. Fourth today, according to the Washington Times, House Republicans passed their stopgap funding bill on Thursday to keep government open while terminating the new health care law, setting up a final showdown next week with Senate Democrats and President Obama, who have firmly rejected the GOP approach. The 230 to 189 vote, which split almost exactly along party lines, is the precursor to the big action next week, when the Democratic Party in the Senate is expected to strip out the health care provisions and send the bill back to the House, where Republicans will have to decide whether they can accept it at that point. All sides are racing to beat a September 30th deadline, which is when current funding for the federal government runs out. The new measure would cut the government through December 15th, essentially at last year's levels, and would leave the budget sequester cuts in place. While President Obama also attacked two amendments to the final bill, one to address one to direct how government spending is prioritized in the event the Treasury Department bumps up against its borrowing limit in the coming weeks, and another that strips out funding for President Obama's signature Affordable Care Act, both of which would effectively stop its implementation. Fifth today, according to Religion News Service, the Chicago-based Moody Bible Institute has dropped its ban on alcohol and tobacco consumption, by its 600-plus faculty and staff, for those who work in its radio and publishing arms. The change in August reflected a desire to create a high-trust environment that emphasizes values and not rules, spokeswoman Christine Gores said. Employees must adhere to all biblical absolutes, Gores said, but on issues where the Bible is not clear, Moody leaves it to employees' conscience. Employees may not drink on the job or with Moody students who are not allowed to drink when in school. The change at Moody represents the latest shifts in attitudes at different Christian institutions in recent years. Jennifer Woodruff Tate, managing editor of Christian History Magazine, said it's part of a larger trend of wanting cultural acceptance who also noted that professors would go to academic conferences and be embarrassed when they couldn't drink with their friends. A lot of people, she said, saw attitudes to alcohol as a witness. Many people are saying there are other ways to witness, and this is a way to fit in. Six today, according to Christianity Today News, extended fighting between Muslim separatists and the Philippine military has forced 80,000 people to evacuate the predominantly Christian city of Zambonanga. The Mauro National Liberation Front deliberately selected dozens of Christian hostages and used them as human shields, according to Human Rights Watch. The MNLF is fighting a proposed peace treaty between the Philippine government and other Islamist terrorists. In other Islamist factions, the Mauro Islamic Liberation Front reports the Daily Philippine Inquirer. Meanwhile, the armed forces of the Philippines are also under scrutiny by HRW for allegedly torturing and mistreating suspected rebels. Reports that the inquiry says is higher. The two-week struggle has killed more than a hundred people, mostly rebels. The MNLF may still be holding as many as 25 hostages as of Thursday night. The military had regained control of 70% of the American city the sixth largest in the Philippine country. Seven today, according to the Wall Street Journal, Super Typhoon Usagi continued to make its way toward Hong Kong and China's southern Guangdong province on Saturday, as it swept toward the South China Sea with strong winds and heavy rain battering parts of Taiwan and the Philippines. Hong Kong-based Cathay Pacific Airlines and its Dragonair unit 
will halt operations in the city starting permission evening. Starting Sunday evening, the airline said, with plans to gradually reopen services on Monday when weather conditions permit. Hong Kong Airlines and its Hong Kong Transport Company, which operates ferries between Hong Kong and mainland China, also announced service suspensions. The travel disruptions come during a particularly busy time in the region, with China, Hong Kong, and Taiwan all on a long weekend for the Mid-Autumn Festival. While South Korea marks the Chushiko holiday, China officially returns to work on Sunday, so many mainland visitors to Hong Kong will be returning home Saturday, ahead of most of the flight and ferry cancellations. Eighth today, according to the Richmond Times-Dispatch, Geronimo Aguilar, the disgraced founder and former senior pastor of the Richmond Outreach Center, has been indicted by a Texas grand jury on two counts of aggravated sexual assault on a child younger than 14 and on two counts of indecency with a child, if convicted on the two aggravated sexual assault charges, which are first-degree felonies, Aguilar, who once led raucous church services packed with throngs of loyal followers, could spend the rest of his life in a Texas prison. The indecency charges are second-degree felonies that carry a maximum sentence of 20 years behind bars. Aguilar and his attorney did not respond to a request for comment Friday evening. Nine today, according to NBC News, the grandmother of a three-year-old who was among 13 people injured in a shooting Thursday night in Chicago made a tearful plea on Friday for an end to gun violence in her city. It needs to stop. It needs to stop. Semeku Nunn told reporters the day after a gunman with an assault-style rifle opened fire at a basketball court on Chicago's south side. Y'all out here killing these innocent people, kids, parents, grandmothers, mothers, and fathers. It's just got to stop, she said. Three-year-old Deontay Taman Howard was in serious condition but was reported stable after having been shot in the ear. He had an entry wound and an exit wound in his jaw. He's heavily sedated and resting after surgery, the family's pastor, Reverend Corey Brooks of Chicago's New Beginnings Church, reported. Mayor Rahm Emanuel, who cut short a visit to Washington to return to his Bullets Guard City, which was the nation's murder capital in 2012, visited the hospital Friday afternoon. Later, Emanuel spoke at a church gathering and urged the community to come together to crush gun violence. Ten today, according to the Associated Press, more highways in northern Colorado that were cut off because of destructive flooding last week are being reopened, helping to reduce the number of people in need of emergency, shelters, and transportation official helping reduce the number of people in need of emergency shelters, and transportation officials hope reducing traffic congestion in heavily populated areas along the Front Range. Amy Ford, a spokeswoman with the Colorado Department of Transportation, said, I think for a lot of people it's not returning to normal per se, but it's starting to get there with some of these roads being reopened. The American Red Cross had fewer people, using their shelters now that they have access to their homes with some of the roads re reopened. At the height of the disaster, more than a 1,000 people were in shelter, compared to 250 people in shelters on Saturday. The Federal Emergency Management Agency, otherwise known as FEMA, is continuing to increase aid to those in flood-ravaged areas. So far, FEMA has distributed $12.3 million in aid, with the vast majority going to helping people find temporary rentals or making house repairs. That's today's top 10 news stories. You can read these stories and more at urbanchristiannewsnetwork.com. As you go throughout this day, keep this word in mind. 2 Corinthians 13:14 says, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. God loves you, he always has, and he always will. He loves you so much that the Bible says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, why don't you get to know him today? Just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose by the power of God for you. 
pray and ask him to come into your heart today, and he will. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thanks so much for listening. I'm Daniela White with Urban Christian News Network. May God bless your day. Thank you.